coffee shops. Um, we're going to talk about growing because the seed company, of course, is our uh, main core business and our coffee shops is where it all happens. Um, I started growing in the mid-80s. I grew up in Africa and Asia. And um, during that time, of course, in those countries, there's spot all over around, like in California. Um, I'm going to try to explain a little bit what we do here in Holland and also what we do abroad. Yeah? Um, yeah. Yeah. You know what I mean? Okay. Um, we're all going to do it on the mic disc. We're not going to use any background, so I want to just be one on one with you. Uh, I like to speak like this. Um, for great growing indoor, what I will start with. If anybody has a question in the meantime, you all can ask questions, by the way. Yeah? Um, we always say five things are very, very important for growing. The first of all is, of course, your airflow. Uh, for have a good grow room, you need the perfect airflow. Um, without any airflow, and I will explain you later a little bit how, you can't grow a proper plant. I know in America and other places in the world where you have problem with airflow, you guys use all CO2. But all remember, even CO2, although it, does, it, it looks like it does a good job, it's always an extra thing you have to do because your airflow is not properly organized. Um, cold places with airflow, you should make sure you have a pre-room to preheat your air before it goes into your flowering room. That's the first thing that, I would, that we would recommend. Also, always take away your air up in the room and try to, to take it down in. Yeah? Make sure it doesn't go on the plants. Let it, let it come under the table so it goes nice up. Um, second, what's a big debate all over is um, water. What kind of water are you using? Many, many people use just water from the mountains or from, their, uh, from, from uh, what they have in their house or from a bore. Basically, all water is good. You just have to adapt yourself to the water with the fertilizer that you're using. That's also very important. Um, third thing, what's really um, but very important that comes with the air is the airflow inside. Always make sure you have nice ventilators that make sure that you don't have any stilt air around the leaves. The same when you go sit in a bath and you sit in too long there, you must need the exchange of air ar around your plants and also make them move, especially when they're really young. If you have very young plants and the clones are just rooted and you're transplanting them into smaller cups before you go to the bigger cups, it's a very wise thing to make sure they have good wind. With good wind, you get good roots and you get good stem. Very important. Um, the lighting. Many, many discussions about lighting. Um, big controversial between Europe and the other side. Um, you guys all use 1000 watts, we all use 600 watts. And nobody knows exactly why, but it's very, very simple. And household on the other side of the water, I won't mention any countries because that will be illegal. On the other side of the water, you have four times more power in your house than we have. Here in Europe, we only have houses where the power is 2 times 16 or 3 times 16. And if you're lucky, you have some power for electric cooking. But it's not much. It's not as much as compared as you guys have in the States. So to spread out light, we use 600. That's actually the only difference. But if you compare a 1000 watt to a 600 watt, of course you'll have more with a 1000 watt. So what we do, we try to spread out our light to get the same result. Yeah. Another thing, what's really, really important for growing is your medium. What access do you have? Which area are you? Um, what do you want to grow? Well, already with the high times, I think in 95 we did a big, um, a big debate, vice, uh, bio versus hydro. Um, in the end, we did a blind test with 1,000 judges and it was 51% in favor of bio and 49 in hydro. So if we blindfold everybody here, you won't see much of a difference. Yeah? It's, just, it's just the way you want to grow. Now, if you go to the greenhouse, you'll see a menu half bio, half hydro. Yeah? It's a very, very personal thing. Um, for me personally, when I grow and it's outdoor pot and it's grown dirt, in the end, it's always the best. But, yeah, it's, you can't beat it. Problem is, especially here during the Cannabis Cup, also with the Super Silver we entered, 
My pot is the only pot that's entered this and cured and biological problem. Because I always hope that amongst you, there are really growers that know what they are doing. The problem is, if you have a hydro pot, sometimes you see a little bit more crystals, sometimes you have a little, little bit more yield, but you never, never have the taste of the, of the biological grown outdoor pot. Yeah, so it's a big debate. Also with the hydro system, for sure you are 10 to 15% faster in yield, indoor. So that's also a very, very big advantage for a commercial grower. But on the other hand, you can grow very, very good dirt indoor and have nearly the same results. Also, don't forget that basically any dirt system indoor, if you don't go on with organic feedings after four weeks, is also a hydro system. Eh? Now, the last thing, one of the last things, um, before I will explain a few other things, is the genetics. And here is a very, very long story that Holland is famous of. There's many good seed banks in the past. Uh, also, in other countries, there's many, many good stuff going on, for example, in Canada. Um, what do you, how do you get your good genetics and how do you find a good plant? Well, the most easiest thing, of course, is that you have friends that are already long-time growers and you know the stuff, they get their cutting, get their cutting. That's the most easiest thing to do. But on the other hand, what we try to explain, especially also in the greenhouse, when you grow or smoke, try to not smoke always the same. You will see that if you don't always smoke the same, that most of you guys know, yeah, you, you will like it more, you will appreciate it more, you always get a better feeling, feeling out of it. Yeah? Um, so, well, how do you go along? Well, buy seeds of different companies or different strains, whatever you want to do, and make sure you have two rooms. You always have to have a veg room, and you always need a flowering room. Now, most people only have a flowering room, and so one time they have something really, really nice, they flower it out, and then it's lost. Yeah, it's a pity. Sometimes you go to a really good restaurant, you eat one thing and you, and that was it, you know? You don't have to say you can't make it anymore. No. If you're in that situation, the first thing you can do, you see the plants coming really good, you can re-veg that plant. Yeah? If the plant is flowering already 10, 12, 14 weeks, if it's a sativa, it doesn't really matter. Just put that plant under a 24-hour light cycle for 6 weeks. You will see after 4 weeks the first little cuttings growing out of the bud. Make sure you don't overwater that plant, dry them out a little bit. And after six to seven weeks, you will be able to take a new cutting out of that flowered plant. That's the only way to get that original cutting back if you can't get it. The best way to go is to buy seeds, put them in your veg room, flower, uh, grow them up. The moment you can take two cuttings, your number one and your number two, those you will flower out in your mother room. So you always have your cutting backed up. Now, most genetics in the world are not stable. So it's already very important to pick out your phenotype that you like. Um, uh, in those phenotypes, you see a lot of different things. Many people say sometimes, yeah, why are the seeds not stable or some are more stable than the rest? You know, technically it's very easy to make uh, seeds stable. But do you really want that? Don't you want maybe to pick out your phenotype that's a little bit more yielder to sell and a phenotype that's a less yield to smoke for your private, especially with the sativas. So, the trick to avoid all those problems is to just grow all those phenotypes out, make sure you have them back up in your veg room, and then flower them out, and then make your decision what you like. Now, if you do that, it's always optimum to use as much seeds as possible from one variety. So even if you put out 50 or 100 seeds from one strain, you only keep the best mother. You, all the other ones you kill. You have to play God if you work with genetics, otherwise you're going to have so much in the end, it's impossible. So every time you find something that you really like, or you think you're going to like, just keep that one, one particular mother. Yeah? Um, the age of those mothers will go from 6 months to 12 months. You can keep it under a nice 18 hour cycle. Um, after 12 months, throw it away. And if you're doing less than six months, you're also overfeeding and not taking well care of it by air and stuff like that. Just make sure you keep somewhere in the middle of that. With rock wall, you sometimes can keep it a little bit longer because you can dry out the plants easier than with soil. But both will do a very good job. Soil is much easier. How's the super soil grace? You like it? Very good. Okay. Hey, Jerry, how are you doing? Hey, you're going to win.
start this year? Oh, I'm always going to win until I lose. Where's your skull or what? Where's your skull? This one?